What's going on, Pats Nation? This is Jace back with another Mock Draft Monday on the Patriots Drive podcast. It's official. The Patriots have the third overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft after they finish the season 4-13. and Lots of questions. Who's going to be the coach? Where are they going to go? What are they going to do in free agency? But we're just going to talk about the first three rounds like we've done the previous two weeks. And then next week, we're going to get into some trades or a four-round mock draft. So make sure you guys stay tuned. And without further ado, let's get right into this mock draft. Thank you to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. With Underdog, you have a chance to 20 times your money in a single night. You just have to choose higher or lower for whatever player stats you want, and you have a chance to win big. Pick anywhere from two to five players by downloading their app or going to underdogfantasy.com. And now with their pick of insurance, you don't even have to hit on all your picks to win the money. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you use code PATCHDRIVE today for your first deposit matched up to $100. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, um, Patriots officially picking third overall. They lose to the Jets, but the Commanders also lose to the Cowboys. Strength of schedule was not um, bad enough for the Patriots to surpass the Commanders with the second overall pick. So the Patriots are sitting at pick three. Bears are officially on the clock at one. There's a lot of reports of what they're going to do. In this mock draft, I had the Bears taking Caleb Williams. You know, there's reports. Justin Fields kind of had an emotional speech. They're like, you know, what are we going to do? Or, or am I going to be here? I don't know. I love my time here. There's maybe reports they move on from him. Pick two, commanders, they need a quarterback. They went with Drake May. So where does that leave the Patriots? As them taking quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU. This was probably one of the most requested things that I've seen just by doing two mock drafts. A lot of Patriots fans are very excited about the potential of getting Jaden Daniels. And I don't blame them. Like, no one's arguing what Jaden Daniels can be because He's the Heisman Trophy winner this year. I mean, he was so fun to watch in college football this year. Um, he ha- uh, won the Heisman Trophy. He had over um, 38, or he had 3,800 yards, 40 total touchdowns to four interceptions. He led the country at the quarterback position in rushing with over 1,100 yards and added 10 rushing touchdowns there. The, the dude's an animal. He's a freak. He throws a great deep ball. He transferred from Arizona State a couple of years ago, um, and there was kind of some controversy there. but. You know, ever since he's been at LSU, all he's done is win games. And, you know, they probably thought they were going to be a little better this year than what they were as a team. But Jaden Daniels did not disappoint. His athleticism is going to excite a lot of Patriots fans. They're going to want him because of what he can do in design quarterback runs or extending the play scrambling. In my opinion, what he showed this year was probably better than Caleb Williams. Like he was just so dynamic in what he was doing as a true runner and as a uh, guy that can extend the play. Um, Very good on the run, too. So, you know, like I mentioned, when he's extending plays and trying to, you know, not just tuck it and run, he can still hurt you with his arm, keeps his eyes downfield. Really good leader, too. A lot of people spoke highly of him when he left Arizona State. There was a lot of reports that all his teammates hated him. That was not really a concern um, at LSU. He was a great leader, and, you know, everyone seemed to love him, and, you know, he's a Heisman Trophy winner this year. He needs to get a little bit better at just operating from the pocket, right? Like not everything has to break down. And this was kind of my concern with Caleb Williams. I don't think that it's a bad thing because they're so good at what they do when they scramble that, you know, most of the time they're going to make it work out, but he needs to be able to operate within structure. You know, he's going to be asked to um, have a ton of pre-snap reads. He's going to be asked to, you know, operate and look from, you know, his first progression to his second, to his third. And I just want to see him operate more in structure. I'm not saying he can't because I'm, I'm not, you know, questioning him, but it's just something you didn't really see in college because of what he was able to do with his legs. I also question are the Patriots, whether it's Bill O'Brien calling the offense or whoever they bring in, are they really going to change drastically into a team that is using Jaden Daniels like a Lamar Jackson? Now, I think if you bring in a Jaden Daniels, you have to change your scheme. You have to fit him because he's not Mac Jones. He's not Michael Penix. He's not Drake May, right? Those guys can run. They can scramble, but he's better than them. You're going to have to probably do some sort of QB run game a little bit, at least, especially in the red zone or short yardage. So I wonder if, you know, obviously if the Patriots take him, they're going to use him. But I wonder what the Patriots offense would look like, who would be calling the plays and what they'd want to build around Jaden Daniels, because 
he is, if you think of quarterbacks, he's probably one of the best running threats coming out of college, except for Lamar Jackson. Like what he did this year was incredible with his legs, you know, both scrambling and design quarterback runs. So there would probably be a scheme switch, which needs to happen with the Patriots and probably might happen just depending on what happens with Bill Belichick, which we will have a video coming out. So make sure you guys are liked, subscribed um, to the video or to the channel. So, you know, if we go live to talk about that or if we release another video, but I think that there's going to be a lot of questions, not only around who they draft at three, but what quarterback they take and how they're going to tailor make this offense to fit him, because there's obviously going to be questions on the offensive line and who he's going to be throwing to. So Jaden Daniels would be super exciting. I still have Michael Penix as quarterback three. I already did a mock draft um, where I had Penix going to the Patriots in the second round. First off, guys, that's not going to happen. That's how the mock draft fell. I know Michael Penix would have to be someone the Patriots would either trade back into the first round and get, or they'd have to trade down and take him. But Jaden Daniels, don't get me wrong, like he would be electric. I would love Jaden Daniels in this offense. I still have Penix over him, like I mentioned, but it's like almost 3A, 3B because they both do different things unique. Michael Penix is just a gamer and throws the ball very well. And not that Jane Daniels doesn't, but he adds a little bit more with his legs um, than Penix does. So Jane Daniels pick number three to the Patriots in this mock draft. Who's he going to be throwing the ball to? That's the big question in this draft. I have him throwing it, or I have the Patriots going out and getting Adonai or AD Mitchell from Texas. This guy is a six foot four, 196 pound receiver. That's why, um, or that's one of the concerns is he's a little skinny, this guy has not had much production. He's battled a lot of injuries in his college career. I almost, I don't, I'm not saying talent wise. I don't think that he's talent wise, very similar to George Pickens. But I think if you look at his college career, it's kind of similar, right? In 2021, he was at Georgia. He had 428 yards and four touchdowns last year in 2022. He had 134 yards and three touchdowns. Then he goes to Texas and he was hurt last year. He had an ankle injury. And then last year in 2023 or this year in 2023 he has 845 yards and 11 touchdowns averaging 15 and a half yards per catch. Right. So kind of a George Pickens like career, in my opinion, where he has all the potential in the world. This dude is super talented, great frame, runs good routes, has good speed, can take the top off, but he probably lacks a little bit of acceleration. Um, he has had problems with drops. But if you guys watch the game Texas played against Washington in the college football uh, playoff, the last touchdown they threw, he's kind of mad. And then they just throw a fade ball to him and he jumps too early. But his length and his catch radius, he's so good at tracking the ball. He's still able to go up and catch it and come down with the touchdown. And then the last play of the game was targeted to him. Um, but, you know, it was kind of a bad uh, throw. And, you know, there's pressure on Quinn Ewers. But uh, A.D. Mitchell, you know, it would kind of add another dynamic of more of a deep threat, which what the Patriots need. And he's not the best at contested catches. That's probably what's holding him back from being like a true first round pick. He only has... Um, four contested catches on the year and for being six foot four you're not really looking at that very well but this guy can run the deep ball um texas used him that way he can run intermediate routes he has a pretty good um uh route tree that he can run so for me ad mitchell would be a guy that you could look in the second i'm going to come out with a video um with a bunch of targets the Patriots can get at the receiver position in the second and third, because this is a really deep wide receiver class. Like there's five, six, maybe even seven guys that I would love for the Patriots to take in the second or third round. Obviously you'd love for them to have a chance to get Marvin Harrison jr. Um, and I'll have more videos coming out on where I stand with the Patriots now having the third overall pick on whether they should go receiver quarterback, you know, depending on how the board falls, but there's a, there, this is a deep receiver class. Um, and so, you know, there's going to be guys all throughout it. The only thing that scares me and should scare a lot of Patriots fans is they haven't had a lot of success drafting guys, right? They've, they've take, they took Tyquan Thornton over um, George Pickens. Like I just mentioned, we all know the Nikhil Harry debacle, AJ Brown, Debo Samuel, you know, there's been guys there for the Patriots to take and they've chosen the wrong ones. So is it a evaluation part that they're not good at? I don't know. Is it a development part? Do they need a new receiver coach? I don't know what it is, but they have missed on more receivers than they've hit in these early rounds. And that is kind of a scary thing for me. Um, and so I kind of, I don't know. I, I don't say, I don't want to say not draft a receiver because they need playmakers and they need young ones. If they're going to get a Jaden Daniels or Drake may, they need to pair them with one, but it's also just 
a concern of mine and kind of worries me. So um, another huge need for the Patriots, and I'm probably going to do more mock drafts where I'm taking an offensive tackle in the second round than I am taking a receiver. I didn't like any of the second round tackles the way this board fell. Um, there's guys that are going to pop up in the senior bowl because we know the Patriots love the senior bowl um, that I will talk about too in preview or in upcoming mock drafts. But this one, I have the Patriots taking Kingsley Suamata uh, Tia out of BYU. This guy's a five star recruit going out to Oregon. He transferred to BYU. Um, this guy has some position versatility. I really like uh, Kingsley. Um, he started at right tackle in 2022 for BYU. They had Blake Freeland, who was a third round pick and started a ton of games for the Colts this year. And then now he's played um, exclusively left tackle this year for BYU. He's six foot six, 320 pounds, big athletic sucker. He has great length, right? Like there's no doubt that he's going to be a tackle. Some people were like, you know, they have that 33 inch arm wingspan or uh, threshold. If you're under that, you're probably kicking into guard. This is also a guy that made Bruce Fieldman's freak list um, earlier this season. He was number three on this freak list, right? So, you know, he goes through and rakes some of the guys that are the most freakish athletes and across the country, you know, regardless of position. Kingsley Suamatea made this list, right? And there, there's high praise on there. Uh, their OC, Aaron Roderick, said that he is the most athletic and violent O-lineman he's ever coached. Now, that coach, Aaron Roderick, coached. Garrett Bowles, who has been a longtime starter and was a first-round pick for the Denver Broncos a couple of years ago. He coached him at Utah, and he coached Blake, Blake Freeland last year. Um, he also said that he thinks – or he says that he's more athletic than Blake, Blake Freeland. If you guys remember, Blake Freeland set a record last year with a um, standing vertical jump of 37 inches, and that dude was 6'8", 302 pounds. They're saying Kingsley's more athletic than he is. Um, he also, Blake also ran a four, nine, eight 40. They're saying that Kingsley outruns some of their linebackers in practice. He hit 21 and a half miles per hour as a 318 pound freshman. That's what their sports scientist at BYU said. So this guy made the freaks list. Like I mentioned, very athletic, a guy that can do a lot of good things. Um, there, I think that he has a ton of potential on that side of the ball. There's guys like Troy Fontenau, <clears throat> Graham Barton, who I think <clears throat> are going to naturally go to guard just because of their length. Kingsley is not one of those guys, and he's a guy that's probably fallen off. He's not really in the top seven or eight, right? Even Graham Barton, those guys I just talked about as guards, probably going to go before him. Possibility you can get him in the early third, like Indianapolis got Blake Freeland last year. Um, really strong, good in the run game, uh, is physical, displaces uh, the defensive lineman um, when he fires out. Um, one thing about him just, and it's, it's kind of been a problem at both right and left tackle is he exposes his chest a lot in pass sets. He's really athletic and has good feet to get out to the guys, but he doesn't have great hand placement technique. This wouldn't be an issue if, you know, Dante Scarnecchia was still the offensive line coach. I think Adrian Clem is a great offensive line coach too, and I'm not taking anything away from him. If he stays, you know, there's obviously been concerns or there's been issues with him in the front office and the whole coaching staff in general. So if he stays, but I think this guy has all the athletic abilities, the frame, the size, everything to be a very good third round still and probably would have to be maybe a one year project. But you could start him at left tackle this year, get him a ton of experience because we don't really have a guy that can play there. And he could turn into, you know, a Pro Bowl type of tackle um, just with the athleticism and the physical traits alone. So got to work up some technique, got to clean up some of that stuff. Um, but, you know, a guy that was a highly rated prospect transfers from Oregon to BYU because he wanted to be closer to home originally from Utah, you know, and has had a great year, a uh, great couple of years starting um, and has some versatility, right? Say maybe they do go sign a left tackle and they do want to move a and keep him at right guard. I think Michael when the right tackle for the Patriots, that's where I'd play him. But if you want to move Kingsley around, you can put him at right tackle and find another left tackle. But you know, it, that that's all going to be kind of discussed throughout um, the next couple months with the draft process. So, I'm super excited to just do more mock drafts every week. Guys, if you don't know, I'm doing a new mock draft Monday every Monday until the draft, right? So it's going to be me, and I'm going to go to a four-round mock draft next week. I'm going to start including trades in here shortly. I'm going to talk about every scenario. You guys are going to love some. You're going to hate some. I might take an offensive tackle first round. I might trade down. I might take a um, receiver. I might take a quarterback like I did. 
Um, I might take a quarterback in the third round. Like I'm going to bounce around so I can talk about as many prospects and as many players that I think could fit in the Patriots as humanly possible, just because in reality, we don't know. Like I'm going to have guys that I like. You guys are going to have guys that you like. The Patriots are probably not going to take them no matter what. But I want to talk about as many of these guys talk about what they've done in college, how they uh, per, or, um, look as a prospect, what they're doing in the bowl games, whether it's a senior bowl, hula bowl, stuff like that. Just bring content, bring awareness to as many guys because the draft process is a lot. There's a lot of guys the Patriots could go after. So really excited for that. Again, guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment down below what you would rate this mock draft who you'd like to see me target maybe for next week's, um, whether you know it's someone at pick three or maybe someone in the third or fourth round that you think I could target. So let me know, comment down below, um, and turn that notification bell on because we will be going live um, a lot more often to just talk about free agency and what the Patriots are going to do and obviously the Bill Belichick situation. So appreciate all the support. Use our code at underdog, Pat's Drive, or click the link in the bio. And until next time, talk to you later.